you know, you know, Miriam, uh, let's talk about personal branding a, a little bit. And uh, I would say that uh, a lot of people here came into this webinar uh, to know a little bit more about this. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, what advice would you give? Would you give these guys about professional branding? How would they do it? Uh, and specifically, I, I would I would go to social media. I mean, there's nowadays the social media can be a great tool. It could be a very, you know, powerful tool. Um, say you go, I go every year to the IRE. That's another way to network very well. IRE is the investigative reporter editors. You know, I call it the nerd fest. I go every year because I'm a nerd. Um, uh, but, but when you go, you know, the first thing that happens is people will start following you and they're going to see what you have on there. So definitely put your work on social. If you're proud of it, put some work on there. Um, I always say, uh, Put a little bit of everything. I've had reporters, because I think I'm everyone's mom, and they treat me like everyone's mom, um, that come here new, and I see something, and they'll be doing hard news, and then they'll do a fun piece, and their personality comes out, and I call them. I'm like, you need to pull that and put that in your air check, and put that in your demo, because it shows another side of you. So I think when you put together a demo, or when you put stuff on social so that people find you, um, Put a little, put a little of everything, you know, put, you know, show your, your, your diversity, show how, how, you know, versatile you are. Um, because that's what I want. I mean, I, so it's funny how um, I always get jobs that I don't want. Well, I did when I was young, the traffic was one. And then when I moved to New York, I was looking for a, a news position in New York because my husband got a job up there and I sent my demo on a Friday and Monday, the news director called me. I was like, man, post office was working better back then. There was no pandemic. And, uh, and she's like, listen, I'm going to have a news position, but what do you think about doing weather? I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> weather in New York where weather is an issue. I'm like, I don't know about weather. She's like, listen, I promise you it's going to be like a month, but I need somebody. I'm going to hire somebody, but can you do that? And I was like, okay. Um, so, <laughs> so I did weather by the way, but for, for a couple of months in New York, it was, it was, it was, I mean, you know, it was terrible. You, I, you know, I, I, a, I built a pattern with you, Miriam. Uh, <laughs> the fact that you get the jobs that you don't want. You know? I, I got all these jobs I didn't like. But yeah, but that, that's really interesting because I've been there uh, as well, and I've gotten you know a project that I don't want to do because I don't feel that I can that I'm qualified. I, I was right. once asked to do a show about economics, and what would I know about economics? I'm just a journalist. <laughs> but anyway, I had to do it. And uh, it ended up, you know, I, I ended up doing something really good. Uh, and, and I wasn't aware of that. But the fact is that sometimes, you know, life is going to throw at us opportunities that won't be the ones that we're waiting for. How do you deal with that? How do you tackle those situations? I go ahead and I do it. I do it because, I mean, depending on what it is. I mean, I'm not going to go do something that's terrible, obviously. Um, but I went head in with the, with the weather. I, I did it as a news person. I've done everything because I'm a news person. So I did weather as a news person. I probably over explained things. Um, and I cited my sources. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> um, the people were really nice to me in New York. They were, they, I, I got to tell you, you know, New Yorkers, they always like, oh, New Yorkers, New Yorkers were the nicest people. They were so kind. Um, oh, she kind of froze. Let's wait for, uh, Miriam to come back. Um, and, yeah, there is a question in the chat about how often to update. Oh, you want to get somewhere. Uh, you yeah. have technical oh, difficulties there. Yeah, uh, but anyway, uh, I do have a question from one of our listeners here, and uh, it's uh, it circles back to the demo tape. Uh, she's asking, how often do you update your demo reel? Uh, I believe, and I'm, I'm going to give you a bad example because I'm kind of set in my ways and I, I should be updating my, uh, my demo. Um, but I'm kind of here. Um, I'm kind of here for good for now. Um, but I know reporters that are constantly updating. I mean, if you have something that is good that you just did, I would throw it in your demo constantly, especially if you're looking for work. It, um, I would update it, you know, monthly. I would always update my, my demo. You, you know, you want to have your best up there and takes edit yourself out. You know, you're like, hey, that's a little old. You know, I have a better one. Um, I would I would update it monthly. I know reporters who update their demo monthly, especially if you're looking for something, you know, you know, you know well, yeah, in, in, in 
I'm, I'm the same as you, you know, my, my, I haven't, you know, uh, and I shouldn't yeah. be saying this because I teach I demo know. tape in the school, but uh, my <laughs> demo hasn't been updated for around three years now. But again, we, we have a tendency to do other kinds of things when we are inside the industry and, and have been in the industry for a long time. Uh, and uh, to me, for example, demos are not that important right now because there's some other things that I can show for. Uh, in a way, but when we are getting started, we do need the demo tapes, and, and, and they are, you know, really important in, in, in getting us noticed by the people that have the power of decision and, and the power to get us the job that we want, that we want. But anyway, talking about the jobs that we want, uh, everybody here, Miriam, so just, just so you know, uh, will and, and is being trained to get entry level positions in the industry. Uh, talking about entry level positions, uh, we have the soft skills that we normally need, but we have also the hard skills. About those two, um, what would you think is needed? What do these guys need as soft and hard skills for them to make it inside the industry, at least on the entry level positions that will allow them to move inside uh, this business as they evolve into better positions? I definitely think you need to be able to enterprise stories, um, which is goes back to knowing your community. So that's, you know, on, on, on one side, you need to know that. And uh, another big change in the industry is MMJs. I mean, when I was young in New York, I remember uh, the MMJs were like few for the small little, you know, New York one stations. And we'd always feel bad for the MMJs and we'd help them with their live shot against the, you know, the union rules because we felt bad for them. Now, most of the people that are being hired, if you are MMJs. Um, so you need to be able to shoot, edit, produce, you know, a little bit of everything. Um, definitely, you know, be organized. I always tell people, they're like, oh, you're such a good reporter. I'm like, I am not a good reporter. I am the most organized reporter. I can juggle 10 stories while somebody's just working on one because I have trained myself to be the most organized reporter. The other day I was taping stuff for, you know, I have like five brands and the anchor looks at me. She's like, how do you keep all that together? I'm like, I am an organizational guru. Like I figured my way out, uh, you know, how to work my, my crazy brain. And I know what I have to do. I produce my own stuff. I do all my things. And so be very organized. 